I have mentioned in our previous video, particularly on the introduction video, I have mentioned about JSON as part of our processes when we are going to work with our database. Okay, so that is why before we're going to go with our database programming, our topic on the database, we are going to discuss first on this video uh, how are we going to deal with a JSON or what is a JSON. Okay, so JSON is defined as JavaScript object notation. Okay, it is a lightweight data interchange format. So I want you to take note on the data interchange format. Okay, so we have before we have uh, the CSV, we have the XML, and so on. Okay, so but what is the most popular, mostly used, most widely used data inter interchange format nowadays is actually JSON. Okay, so how did we use those uh, CSV, XML? Okay, they are just actually almost the same with JSON. Okay. As, but JSON is actually uh, the newest among uh, those that I have mentioned. Okay, so how come that this becomes the most popular uh, data interchange format nowadays? So first of all, it is lightweight. Okay, so it doesn't occupy too much data or too much space. Uh, so therefore, it would be faster to transfer data from one platform to another. Okay, another one is, it is easy for humans to read and write. Okay, so it will be very easy for us, so we're going to have it later. If it is true that it is actually easy for us to read and write uh, JSON data. And last is we have, easier for a machine to parse and generate, convert or in, uh, decode and encode. Okay. Now, another thing is that it is language independent, okay? So since it is language independent, so therefore no matter uh, what is your programming language, it could be C, C++, C Sharp, JavaScript, and so on, you could still use JSON. Or if you are working on a JavaScript project, and then you are going to communicate with a Python application, then JSON could still be used. Okay, another one is we have it is used to transmit data between a server and a web application. So this definition is actually uh, the most uh, fit into or uh, in this series that we're going to have. Okay, so transmit data again. It is data interchange between a server. So we are we're talking here about a server and in our case that is actually our API and a web application. In our case that is our Flutter web application. Okay? So when a server or an API and a web application is going to communicate or it is going to transmit data, then we're going to use JSON. An alternate an alternative to the one I mentioned that is XML. Okay? So we have here an example of a JSON data. Okay. Now it is said it is represented by a key value pair. Okay. Where the keys are strings and the values can be any valid JSON data type. Okay, so that is why we have here. If you by the way, if you are still familiar with the map in Flutter, this is now actually the map. Okay? So it has a key, then value, another key, value, and so on. Okay, and as you can see here, all of the keys that we have are all strings, enclosed with uh, quotation marks. Then the first one here is a string, then a number, and a null. Okay, so we have different values here. So therefore, as it is defined. Values can be any valid JSON data type. If you can still remember our map in Flutter, strings and dynamic. Dynamic means 
different data types. Okay? Actually, this is just the simplest or the most basic form of a JSON string or JSON data. We could still add, for example, I'm going to add here an address. Then an address could still contain different key value pair. For example, we're going to have here a street. Um, Donald Street, okay, comma, then we have city, let's say Cagayan, then country, and so on, okay. So, as you could see here, we have the first level, then another key value, the key here is we have address and the value is another json okay json data or an array but anyway don't be confused as of this moment it is because actually we could still have we could still go deeper on this one okay another uh, for example we could have another value here then another string or json okay but again, so now we are just going to go first to the, its simplest form, which is this one here. Okay. So we are going to have an example for this by using a public API provider. Okay, so I have here an API Fanny that I owe free API. So instead that I'm going to create like this one here, we are going to forego first at this moment our uh, PHP because we are going to use here a free public API. I right, so have here a lot of lists now, and we have API Fanny that I owe. Then we have different API providers here, public APIs by the way, and they are free: Cat Facts, CoinDesk, Board. Board is a free API to find something to do by getting suggestions for random activities and so on. Okay, so when it is your turn to work for this one, so you're going to try any of these uh, free API endpoints. Okay, so now I'm just going to have cat facts. Okay, so I'm going to copy uh, the URL, then paste here and press enter. So we have the API, no, we have the JSON data returned by this URL with two, uh, what is a keys, we have fact and the length, okay? And it is actually on a JSON format, okay? So whenever I'm going to refresh this one here, it is going to return another pair of fact and length, okay? Fact, then we have the value. So, string, string, and we have a string number. Okay? So, what I want is that I'm going to display this one here, facts, into my Flutter application. Okay? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the URL, then going back to our previous code, so I'm going to have Instead, that we are going to have our API, so I'm going to use my public uh, URL, public API. By the way, I'm not going to change anything here, so still we have the text widget and the button. When we get data, so when we are going to press the button, it's going to call get message from API, which is we have this uh, method or function. Okay? So since we are not going to send any data into our API, so therefore I'm not going to use any more our query parameters. Since we don't have our query parameters, I'm going to delete this one here. Okay. So actually that's it. Okay. So we have here our URL, then we call it here 
then we displayed if ever it is successful then we are going to display the response that body into our message okay so i'm going to save then reload okay so a bit here click so it calls on the api then it returns here okay but what you could see now is we have displayed the whole JSON data. So as you can see here, we have the curly brace, then we have the key and the value. Okay? Then key, value, uh, uh, closing, curly brace. Okay? What I want now is that I want to get only this one here. Okay? So that is why instead that we are going to go with directly setting the message into the response that body what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have string then I'm going to call it cat is equal to response dot body okay then if you can still remember by the way again just to reiterate this is in uh, with our flutter it is actually in the form of a map okay then so that we could get this value this value here so we must have to make a reference into our key which is fact okay so here i'm going to have cat then fact so my point here or my purpose here is actually to get the value blue-eyed white cats are often prone to deafness because it is labeled as a key for the fact but as you can see we have here an error the argument type string can't be assigned to the parameter type of integer now the problem here actually is uh, cat is actually a string okay so therefore I could not use this one here it is uh, a name parameter oh, I forgot the term so associative array by the way this is what you call as an associative array meaning I am trying to associate this value here or this key here with actually this one okay but since this is not an array cat is not an array so therefore we have an error here so therefore we are going to change the data type for our cat it should be a map of string comma dynamic okay why because uh, again going back here it is string 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 number I string 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 number so therefore the result if ever trying to convert this one into a map it should be string dynamic but then as you could see here we are getting here an error it said a value of type string can't be assigned to a variable of type map string dynamic okay so we have incompatible types so we have here a string and map string dynamic so what we are going to do here since we are very sure that the format of this is actually a map is we are going to convert this string into a map so how are we going to convert that so we are going to use now the json decode function response that body okay by the way i'm using here response i uh, know json decode it is from the library convert all right so therefore that is why automatically it adds here an import statement for the convert library all right so that's json decode so json decode means from string it is going to convert into a map all right into an array okay so as you could see here the error has been removed okay uh, so let us try save then reload so here 
get data ah. so as you can see it now only returns the fact value okay so get data again so as you, the curly brace has been removed and also with the length also has been removed okay so again I just would like to reiterate what the steps that we do here we only changed our URL then when we get or when we receive our body so we have converted it into uh, resulting JSON object particularly it is actually a map okay then to get the fact field okay so we use now an associative array like this one here so that then in a set state we assign it on our message so that it would then be displayed into our text widget okay so that's how are we going to uh, process the JSON string that we receive from uh, this API endpoint okay so what you're just going to actually to take note here you know is that you must be sure that the JSON data sent into our application must be a valid JSON format okay because if ever it is not a valid JSON format then it is going to result in an error okay? and that is then going to be controlled by you in your API okay? so I hope you now have the basic idea on how are we going to manipulate a JSON string into a JSON object and manipulate also the content of that JSON object. So that's all for this video and I'll see you on the next topic.